Hi, everybody, and welcome to Till Death Do Us Pod with me, Tova Lee. And me, Michael Lee. You must have thought, by the way, I think people think that we have this pre-recorded, but we're just super professional. We don't actually record it. Um, what, does that make sense? Just, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, because some people have like their top of their show recorded. Oh, that, they can't be asked to just introduce themselves. <laughs> no, I like. think it actually- How long does it take? <laughs> I don't know. But so as I was doing it, I right. realized that I might fuff it up because I have the most horrendous cold right now. Does it mm. sound like I'm stuffy? No. no? Really. It's not so bad. Okay, good. How are you? I'm all right, yeah. Yeah, you're good? I'm well. I'm yeah, well. you're Thank well? You. That's yes. all I'm getting? You're well? Yeah. I literally haven't spoken to you all day. Okay, that's all I'm getting. Okay, cool. Uh, we have a really good show uh, today. We have a very special guest who, let's be honest, we know very little about, which is exciting. So we're going to discover everything about her. She's actually based in America, uh, but well, no, actually she's based in the UK, but she's currently in America. Uh, and I came across one of her TikToks recently it was a video about her sort of um well she lives in the uk and i think she's married to somebody from the uk and she was talking about how uk people feel like uh, it's their god-given right to go on holiday when actually in america people <laughs> don't go on holiday every year and then i told you about because i thought oh my god that's so true like why is this a thing why is everybody obsessing about the ho summer well, holiday lockdown, you mean, yes you or just like oh in the summer can we go on holiday can we yeah. go on holiday and you just get carried away in that conversation and i said that to you and you were very defensive was i you were i love yeah. to go away you were. What can I say? <laughs> okay, should we welcome her Absolutely. onto the show? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we will be speaking today with Molly Molshine. Did I say that right? Did I say that yes, right? Yes, you did. That is my Hello, name, Molly Molshine. Thank you so much for joining us, Molly. Thank well, you guys for having me. This is awesome. I'm so excited. So how did you end up in, you normally, I mean, I know you're in the States, but you do live in London as we do. How mm. did you end up in London? So my fiance is Irish, but he's right. from Northern Ireland. So oh, okay. he, we met in New York and he really wanted to get back closer to his family. So mm. we decided to come back to the UK and we've been in London for like two and a half years now. Oh, okay. And so you've yes. obviously been to Northern Ireland as well. Yes. Yeah. I really like it there. It's really fun. Mm. It's kind of, I feel like Northern Ireland is the New Jersey to London's yeah. New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that's a good way yeah. of putting it yeah. wow I, yeah because because it, it's just like you know obviously it's not a, a world capital shall we say but it's really fun to go to bars there so it, it just reminds me of new jersey like people just take themselves a little less seriously so everyone gets a little more crunk and has a little more fun you know how what are I mean? you with how are you with the northern ireland accent because it's oh, quite a heavy it's, accent it is crazy. Like my fiance, our first date, I had no idea what he was saying <laughs> at all. I was just like, you're cute. So I'm just going to smile and nod and hope that I eventually get the hang of it. Actually, something really funny on our first date, he asked me if I had ever had a margarita, which I was just like, what kind of alien <laughs> asks that? <laughs> Have you ever had a margarita? I was like, Yes. And then when I moved to Already London, today. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I moved to London and I was like, oh, this is why no one has ever heard of a margarita because the margaritas here are like brown for some reason. Oh, right. So see. nobody wants them. So, yeah. I think like when people talk about uh, say anything about Northern Ireland, I have a vision of Mike shivering in oh, an yes. outdoor oh. marquee because we Your went my friend. i have a good friend who's from northern ireland mm. and we went to her wedding and she had it on this beautiful farm her her family are like from they have a farm and it was like this beautiful marquee no, and it was like out was it near newry was it newry uh, i don't near know newry. exactly where it was gorgeous and it was up mm. on like a lovely hill but as you know it's very cold and it was really windy and at some point i looked over at mike and he was just Ill. like was he it? got ill did i catch it from you what did you have i don't what was it? What was that? No, it was tonsillitis. tonsillitis. You're making this up now. I can't like remember. It was a long time ago. Anyway, but you were very violently ill. So then we had like a night away oh. and we thought without the kids, like yeah. amazing, right? But he basically was in, was bed, in bed in a hotel. Was it? <laughs> that was the last time I've been sick. Yes, it was. You don't get sick a lot. But what it was, it was quite funny because go talking about how the Irish like a drink. So we're there and it's getting cold, but everyone's just in short sleeves, yeah. sunglasses. And I'm I just know. going, and I'm not Breathe. drinking off him. I'm going, it's 
freezing. I'm absolutely freezing. And she's going, yeah, but everyone's else. Said, yeah, because they're drunk. <laughs> They've got alcohol in their bodies. So they don't realise. And you get it in the north of England. Anyone who's been to Newcastle yeah. will know. You go out on a Saturday night in the winter and everyone is in short sleeve and, and, and little mini dresses. Why? They're full of alcohol. Yes. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. I feel like the weather in Northern Ireland is what the weather, what people think the weather is in London. Cause I don't find mm. the weather in London to be bad. Cause yeah. you know, I'm from the Northeast U S and it's like basically the same. And there have been days this past week while I'm in New Jersey, where it's been warmer in London than it is in New Jersey. Mm. So it's really funny to me. British people are always like, Oh, you must miss the great weather. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like the blizzards and <laughs> torrential downpours like no not at all <laughs> I think that most people when they think about America I don't know why but they immediately think about LA or mm-hmm. or Miami so like, <laughs> it must be great weather um okay we're gonna talk in a minute about uh all the amazing things you're doing because so you're obviously a writer and a podcaster and you do stand-up comedy and we want to get into all of that but before we're gonna play a little game it's a bit of an icebreaker even though we've kind of like immediately we've kind of just jumped into conversation but we're gonna play a game called uh two truths and a lie or two lives and a truth we don't actually know how to play this game so (laughs) either okay either um but the point of it is that we get to know each other a little bit better and uh we see how good we are at lying we mm. suck, by the way, just so you know. I think so oh. far I've got away with one. I think. Really bad. Yeah. Um, no pressure. Yes, no pressure. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, do you have stories prepared, Molly? Yes. Oh, Good. That helps. Oh, hang on. Fine, that helps. Yeah. If, if someone's actually bothered to write three down. Do you, do you want to kick off, Tova? You like? Yeah, to... I'll go first. You okay, go first. I'll go first and Mel, uh, Molly, you can go there. Okay, so I'm going to tell my stories. You can't say I'll anything because Mike knows I, me very well. But Molly, it's all you, okay? So here are my three stories. So one is, um, okay, and sorry, just so you know, I have one truth and two lies, okay? Just so you know. Okay, so So I have to guess which one's true. Yes. Okay, Okay, so my first story is I, it's just something about me. I have a really good sense of direction. Like I can navigate out of anywhere. Like, and I have in, in many situations in my life. I'm really good at navigating. Number two I can write with both hands. Ambidextrous. Yes, I'm able to do that. Not very well, but I can do it. And number three is I speak five languages, which are English, Hebrew, Arabic, French, and a tiny bit of Chinese. And so <laughs> what, what's, what is it? Two, what is it? How many? So I've, I've told two lies oh, and okay. one truth. So we're going to get the truth. Yes. Only one thing is true. Only yeah. one of those things is true. <laughs> I, I just want to say, I love how seriously you're taking no, this. No, right. <laughs> this is wish, very important. I wish people could see your face. You were like, yeah. hmm. Mm, quite right. <laughs> well, I'm thinking because I spent this morning, I don't know why, I was I somehow got into this YouTube K-hole okay. of body language experts dissecting right. Meghan Markle and Harry's Oprah interview. Mm. Uh, ah. And I just can't figure out if body language experts are real or not. Right. And I was trying to watch it and like learn all the tips and be like, is this true? Is this not true? Uh, so I was trying to remember his tips when I was just thinking. Ah, okay. And I was actually following one of them because he says, if you look <laughs> to the left, that means you're recalling something. And if you look oh. to the right, I shouldn't be telling you this before oh, I do my good. watch. Oh, that's, that's good though. Know. We want to know for so, next time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently if you look to the right, yes, that means do. you're lying because oh, yes. that oh, is- yeah. I'd think something and I just, I look to the left thinking and you're right, I'd never look to the right. Oh my God. Right. Wow. What do you like? Wow. You look to the right to like summon your creativity mm. and you look to the left to summon your memory. And now I don't remember which way you were looking when you said oh, all that. Prince Harry do? But what if you have a really bad memory? <laughs> you just like, right yeah maybe snapped. that's when you start lying i don't yeah. know that's the thing yeah. i just don't think it's an exact science also megan markle is an actor like right yeah. so she's gonna she, know those things yeah. and maybe she watched the videos you know like other videos about body language. yeah yeah i did a whole video about megan markle it's like such an explosive topic i don't even know if i want to go in there and into it again but yes Dude, i know yeah. I do, you know, one of my things I do each week is um, I I co-host Royally Us, Us Weekly's yes. like royal YouTube show slash podcast and pe- people are crazy. Yeah. Everybody on any spectrum of like the royal universe who has super strong opinions, 
it's yeah. not a it's not a normal person usually. I shouldn't no. be saying this because that's <laughs> what's Do you think I mean largely Americans, from what I believe, love the royal family. Mm. Is that is that fair to say? Um, yeah, because we don't have to pay for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just Good like oh. yeah. yeah. That's a really good you know. Yeah. They're, they're just like fancier Kardashians to us. <laughs> yeah. We're like Good for you. No, but I think people do see them just as like another level of celebrities, mm. but they are now, aren't they? They are sort of yeah. like another level of celebrities, really. They are. And I have really strong opinions about that. Like yeah. I I really do think that they are celebrities in the purest sense of the word. Mm. And I don't consider that to be an insult. And I don't understand why people yeah. think that that's insulting. You know, yeah. like they are archetypes. They are people who we look at and analyze the world through them. Yeah. And yeah. that's what a celebrity is. Like, yeah. you know. Let me, what, what, is, what is your lie? Okay, I think the, the language one is true because uh, I know that Tova is a Hebrew name. I have spoken to a lot of Israeli people and thought they had, I thought they were French because their accent sounds similar to French. So it makes sense to me that you would speak both Hebrew and French. Okay. Arabic is a little bit of a curveball, but why not? <laughs> I, th I think it's that one because that one sounds the most, um, like being ambidextrous isn't that crazy. Having a good sense of direction, I feel like is easy to make up. I think it's the language one because that one is so specific. I so wish that was my truth. Like that would be uh, amazing if I could speak so many languages, right? You barely speak one. I uh, literally barely. It's but yes. <laughs> no, I I'm so boring. I have a really good sense of direction. <laughs> That's great though. I mean, my talents are very, very dull. limited, very dull. <laughs> What's your talent? I can make my way. Yeah, you're, you're, you're fine. <laughs> we go to the supermarket, she'll find the car. I know how to get mark. places. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, but that's, that's good for me. I was a good, I lied, I lied well. Okay, your go, Molly. You, go. you come across as someone who would speak five languages. So that's a talent as well. Seeming wow. that <laughs> smart is also a talent. So congrats. <laughs> cool. How do you feel about like the spaghetti streets of London? You can find your way around. To be honest, since uh, like um, technology, <laughs> I, I, I just don't know anything anymore. If I, you're quite, you're I'm, I'm good, good. But the thing is, you know, I think like it's a, it's something you, your brain gets trained to do. And then if you don't do it a lot, your brain just gets like, it can't do it anymore. So I used to have a really good sense of direction. Remember like places I did live in Paris and I used to speak French. I don't anymore. And I would, I would find my way around, blah, blah, blah. But I think now with sat navs, I'm so bad, like at directions. Do you manage, do you sort of like know London now you feel like you're, you're confident? No, no, <laughs> I, get, like, no. I get lost all the time, yeah. especially because like I lived in Manhattan and I, you learn everything in Manhattan in six months. So then yeah. it kind of created a false sense of confidence where I was like, oh damn, like I am, call me Magellan. Like I got this anywhere I go, I'm going to be like on top of it. And then I moved to London and I was like, oh my God, where is anything? Like what's <laughs> the center? What's the East? Yeah. The e There's stuff farther East. That's not the East and farther you're, West. That's you're not used, the West end. You're used to New York. I mean, why every city doesn't just go yeah it's a grid system yeah we're going to start with street number one we're going to go there there's west side there's east side that's it it's such a simple idea oh no yeah. fancy names for your roads and avenues and whatever no I, I totally agree i actually agree with you well so the reason why they didn't do that in london is because everything burnt down during the great fire and they were gonna reintroduce it as a grid system but all the oh. landowners were like no you're not messing with our land sorry so they oh, were like okay, we really? have to keep the crazy medieval system that's been wow. like slowly yeah. growing so i never knew that you see you learned something I new learn something. wow about the city you lived in your entire life from someone who's been living here for two years that gets you carried away you know. <laughs> remember if not everything about London. yeah but the uh, a few like a years guy, mike's been living like in the area that we live in his entire life and i lived in other areas in london and then moved here and then i can't remember what it was that i discovered like a route you know a new route and he was like wow i never knew and i was like how is that possible like yeah. these are places you you've got I to have my one route <laughs> I have my route i'll stick with my route 
I don't want to, I'm not looking for other routes. I'm happy <laughs> with that route. I'm happy with it. Oh, it yeah, works yeah. for me. Works for you. Okay, yeah. Molly, you're up. You're okay. Your three stories. My two truths and a lie are um, going to be celebrity themed since sure. that's sort of my jam and that's what my podcast is about and everything. So, okay. First one, I did shots with Paris Hilton at a fashion week party. Okay. okay. Second one, Kendall Jenner tried to kick me out of a fashion week party. I think these two could be the same. I just thing. want them all to be true. Okay. Yeah. And the third one, uh, Hilaria Baldwin follows me on Twitter and I forgot and made fun of her for faking the Spanish accent, but she still follows me on Twitter. <laughs> Oh wow! And how many? Is there one lie? Wait, or... one's a lie. There's one lie. One lie. One's a lie. <sighs> I'm. I. I have a. I have a. a I know lie. what I'm gonna say. Do you want to? Do you want to? Like, I'm go? going with. Go on. I think the. I, I think doing shots of Paris Hills was very plausible. I think that one or the being kicked out by Kelly. I think one of those is the lie. Right. And I'm trying no, to work so out I'm not one. thinking that at oh, all. Okay. I'm thinking the Paris Hilton is a lie. Really? Yeah. Okay, we'll go with that then. I, that's why. But I, but only because I'm not. I don't know how old you are, but I feel like you're. Are you? Aren't you like much younger than Paris Hilton? I don't know. I feel like. I'm. And that's why she was thrown out the same party. I fe- yeah, she but I feel age. like Paris Hilton was doing shots like years ago and i don't know if you were clubbing i, I don't know how old now. you are but i don't know maybe i no, i feel like paris, you go with paris yeah oh I'll, I'll 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 go with that one as well then. oh what a good husband okay final answer yeah. yes final answer okay you guys are right that yes! one was- <laughs> yes! but you delivered it amazingly Very well. like Very i well. i was Very, i wasn't sure yeah. it was just the age thing i was like okay mm. was there any truth to it or not at all have you met yes her? i hung out with her at a fashion week mm. after party i just like somehow snuck into the vip room and she was really nice to me. i had met her before when i interviewed her uh. i don't know if she remembered who i was or not but it was her and like five or six guys and me and like she could have been rude and kicked me out and been like who the hell is this but she was really nice and the guys with her were really nice too uh but there were no shots taken no shots at that moment probably how how many years ago was this uh four years ago three four okay so not so long yeah Mm -hmm. I, i i i don't i mean i think i may follow her now on tiktok like i see sometimes her stuff come up i i i kind of like uh paris hilton there's something about her that i really like <laughs> yeah she's really one of the nicest uh, celebrities that I ever like mm-hmm. met professionally and she was just really laid back and cool and not too controlling even her publicist was nice so oh, yeah good to 10 hear. out of 10 good to hear that's good, good. To hear. right we're okay, finished with mine on the icebreakers mine are kind of celebrities as well actually so let me just work this out again uh two are true one is a lie okay okay I once appeared on the cover of a book by the famous U.S. writer Elmore Leonard. Um, Elmore Leonard, quite a well-known sort of pulp fiction-y type thing. I, I'm, I'm on the cover of one of his books. I once painted the house of the famous actor Peter O'Toole, uh, famous for Lawrence of Arabia, being a big film and Harry Potter's, whatever. I once helped paint his house. And thirdly, I once appeared in a Madonna music video. One of those is a lie. (laughs) One of them is a lie. Mm. Madonna is plausible because I know she had her London moment and she was like in the UK for years. Uh, Peter O'Toole also sounds plausible because he's British, Mm. right? Or is he Irish? Whatever uh, he is. I think he's Irish, British, but but certainly lived in... uh, lived in London for many years and yeah I think the Elmore Leonard one is the lie because I thought he was active more so in like mid 20th century so uh unless it was like a reprint of the book I wouldn't I would assume that one's the fake one that's the fake one (gasps) (laughs) no because it was a reprint (laughs) it was a reprint the the lie is I've never painted 
Peter O'Toole's house. No. Peter O'Toole no was alive. I mean, he's an awful painter. Like, I know that would. Well, not... I can decorate. I mean, <laughs> can really? You? Come on, white paint. Mm, mm, mm. Second coat. No, 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 no. Where is that book, by the way? Do we have it? Oh, somewhere. It's somewhere. In my office. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. good picture. Yeah. Are you cool. like modeling in it? He's. he's yeah, he's many, many model. years ago, a friend of mine had a model agency funnel called Uglers. Hello. <laughs> I think it's still going. <laughs> And in the 90s, he was like, he just went, oh, why don't you be in the book? Be in the book. Get... So he got me really obscure, like, photographic stuff. The Madonna music video he got me. Yeah. Which was, I can't remember what song it was. It was the Ray of The Light. one with the paparazzi. The one with the paparazzi. following her. The Something of Love. Da, 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 da. I can't remember. Uh, the one after the one with Ali G. What after the yeah. Ali G one, the next one. Oh, Something after music. Love. I can't remember. Anyway, there was loads of paparazzi at Clouches. I'm there somewhere with a camera. That's there cool. We well done. We're getting so much better at this. Have you noticed today? Like we nailed it. Because oh, normally I see. I we're awful. In general. No, just I thought we've done loads awful. of podcasts. You're now saying we're getting quite <laughs> no. good. No, we're still oh, awful at all... podcasting, okay. but we're quite good at this game <laughs> at the two truths and the life. Oh, okay, we're going to talk about your uh, podcast uh, now because obviously I know yeah. you started as a reporter, right? In mm -hmm. New Jersey, right? Yeah. Um, but you've done so much since. Obviously, you did your your, your stand up now. Uh, I know you were you did Edinburgh in twenty twenty, right? No, well, I was supposed to. Oh, you're supposed to boot to do. Yeah, sorry, the pandemic ruined it. So, oh. yeah. But hoping for are are they doing Edinburgh this year? No. Well, there's a few shows. I've got. A, I'm hopefully taking something up there. But generally, the, it, it won't. There won't be much going on there. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. The, the venue that I was supposed to be in last year was really small. So I don't think that venue is going to be open this year because it just won't be worth it with like social distancing yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Okay, so tell us about the podcast. Uh, you host the uh, Space Trash. Is that right? Yes. So we actually rebranded this week from oh, wow. Diva Behavior to Space Trash, colon, Lifestyles of the Rich and Uranus because... <laughs> Uranus is the planet of fame. So uh, diva behavior started because I was really fascinated by the stories of women who become famous because there are so many parallels in all of them and just the different ways that we treat famous women compared to famous men and how women get called divas, men never get called divas. And the women who do get called divas are usually women who were born working class and worked their way up to being celebrities. It's never people who are born rich. It's very weird, the parameters that we have around who we consider to be a demanding celebrity. Yeah. So I would like to like write a book about that one day, but um, I decided to rebrand to Space Trash because I just want to talk more about all of the different celebrity stories. And my new co-host, Sarah Armour, is an astrologer. So oh. she talks oh, about the astrology be behind all of it every week and sort of weighs in in that way. So it's really fun. It's just like a laid back, funny, fun time talking about all the news of the week. So do you, sorry, to, do you then take certain celebrities, discuss them, and then she looks at their charts? Is that kind of what you do? Yeah, yeah. Right. So like we talked about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck and like how they fit into each other's lives and what their chart is as a couple. Um, and that was something we talked about this past week. And it's really funny because like as a couple, their couple chart, the sun is in Leo, which is like the look at me, look at me sign. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it, it all just like fits in so much. It's so funny. Like, I don't really know that much about astrology, but uh, I, it's just a fun tool for looking at the world, which is the same thing that gossip is and the yeah. same thing that, you know, TV is, it's just like, whether you believe in it or not, it's, it's just like, isn't it fun to talk about these ways of seeing things and, and looking at people's motivation and things like that. And how did you get like, cause obviously you have interviewed a lot of celebrities and that's kind of like the direction your career went in, but it, it wasn't how you started. So how did you fall into that to the whole celebrity world? Well, I started as a small town reporter covering like board of education meetings and like police blotter and city council and things like that. Then I made a video that went viral and it turned into a job as a tech reporter at the New York Observer. And I wasn't even into tech at all, but <laughs> I guess they were just like, oh, she made a viral video about emojis. So she must know everything about tech. And I was like, I can pretend that yeah. that's true. <laughs> okay. Roll with it. 
Yeah. I've, and I've then, got an iPhone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And then I just sort of organically moved into the more like women's interest kind of stuff, like fashion, beauty, celeb stuff. And I just, you know, I am into pop culture because of the stories behind it and the narratives and the reasons why we care about the things we care about. That's really what I'm most into is why do we care? Why do we have emotional reactions to things that people we don't know are doing? Yeah. So that, and that's just like, you know, it's an endless topic. It's just- Wait, but have you found the answer to that? Because I really want to know if you have. Yeah. Go so on then. the way that I- the way that it all started for me when I started to look at celebrity in sort of a more scholarly way, for lack of yeah. a better term, is when I was a tech editor at Business Insider. And I was doing a story about Kim Kardashian overtaking Beyonce with her number of Instagram followers. Right. And I was like, this is so interesting to me because everyone loves Beyonce and everyone hates Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. So like, why would Kim Kardashian have more people voluntarily following her than Beyonce would? Like, if we don't like Kim Kardashian, she shouldn't be famous, right? Yeah. So I interviewed a psychiatrist about this and he basically said, it's because we use these people as archetypes to understand the world. There is no Beyonce without Kim Kardashian. There is no Eve without Lilith. There is no God without the devil. So we don't like, one thing that people always say that's really misguided and simplistic is why can't the best people alive be yeah. the famous people? Why don't we revere brain surgeons? And it's because they're boring. It's just because they're boring. <laughs> and what's fun is conflict and people that we see ourselves in. I don't see myself in a brain surgeon, but I do see myself in Beyonce and in Kim Kardashian. Well, not so much in Beyonce. I'm not gonna <laughs> insult her like that. <laughs> you know, like her music is relatable to me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So like, uh, it's just, it's so much more co complicated and complex than what people think, you know? Yeah. It's so easy to push celebrity news off to the side and treat it like it's crap and garbage. But something else I've been noticing is we are now treating political news as if it's celebrity news. Oh, yeah. The lines mm -hmm. are so blurred. And that's because, you know, the original celebrities were the Greek gods. And then it was royal families. And then it was saints. And so it's always all been intertwined. And mm -hmm. To be a celebrity, all you have to be is someone who people know. And to be someone who people know, you just need to have some sort of narrative that people get a attracted to. And yeah. that's really what it is. Molly, yeah. write this book. Yeah. Do the book. I know, I want to do it. Do I it. Really yeah. You've do got it. it. You've, you've, you've got it all there. Do the book. <laughs> If anyone <laughs> listening is a book agent. Oh, I we I know I, I can get you in touch with she people for up. sure. Like, I'm oh, for sure. It sounds amazing. Uh, wait, but I'm this is such an interesting topic. I so I think you, um there's all of that. And then what I find so interesting is that, like you said, famous people like um artists, for example. So you mentioned Beyonce and she's an artist, right? Um, were famous for their work, you know, for their art. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I feel like platforms like Instagram that have open that kind of all the idea of like stories stories it, people want to see what you've made for dinner I can tell you as somebody who's like tiny in the tiny tiny like corner of my internet uh, my most successful stories are were about rice just do I wash my rice or not like right. people were so engaged in <laughs> in that I find that really extraordinary. So did you talk about that with the psychologist? Cause I'm really, I really want to know what it is. I didn't talk about that with the psychologist but I have my own theory about that. And the thing is this new notion of famous for being famous and famous for nothing and not having talent. That is how it's always been. The attachment of celebrities to work or talent or show business didn't start until the invention of mass media, which was in the beginning of the 20th century. Like there was no famous, world famous actress or singer, or, you know, there were a few world famous writers thanks to the printing press. Mm. But before that, it was all people who were famous for nothing. 
you know, like Marie Antoinette, she didn't have a talent, but she was the most famous person in the world. And everyone wanted to know how she cooked her rice. You know, if she was <laughs> cooking rice, everyone would have wanted to know that. So it's like this idea that you have to have a talent to be famous is actually, that's an aberration. Yeah. All you need to be famous, like I said, is for people to know who you are. And having a talent is a really good shortcut to having that happen. And right. that's the reason why. And that's why in the in the beginning of Hollywood, they had whole teams and industries dedicated to getting gossip about the movie stars into the mm. papers. Yes. Because the work didn't stand on its own. Yeah. You needed to know about these people's personal lives and how they make their rice in yeah. order to get people to buy movie tickets. So my friend, I don't know if you know Rena, uh, the unnatural woman. She's a she's a really good friend and she's a singer, songwriter. And we have these conversations a lot. So I, you know, about the rice, but also painting your room is really good content. Like people love anything that has to do with like home improvement, cooking, you know. Her theory is that people love engaging in things that they do. They're everyday things mm -hmm. that they can also comment on, that they have an opinion on, that they can mm -hmm. chime in. Yeah. So when I did the rice stories, which honest to God became like rice gate, you know, it was like, I never knew. And it was about, do you wash your rice or not? And then I got like, I mean, inundated with so many messages about rice and how to wash it and you, you soak it overnight and you don't soak it overnight. <laughs> like honestly it's like I might feel and she said it's because people have something to say it's like it, they do it every day so I don't know if that's part of it I don't know yeah, yeah like I was one of the biggest features that like Us Weekly is known for is what's in my bag and it's looking at a celebrity's purse it's like yeah. why do I care about Meryl <laughs> Streep's you know, yeah, it escaped tampon that fell out of the wrapper. <laughs> but I want to know about that. I want to know that she also has that because mm -hmm. that's what I have a bag. And I want to know that celebrities also have stuff in their bag. It's yeah. yeah, that's what we all want. It's how we like connect to them. And it also takes us away from our own lives, I guess, like just mm -hmm. sort of it's yeah, it's like a constant reality show just watching other people. I have uh, mixed emotions about that side of things. Like, I don't know how much I like you know, uh, you, do you know what I mean? Like how much I, I, I like it, but um, it's very, very interesting. I want your book to come out. Would, <laughs> will Diva be part of the title, do you think? Yes, I already have the title. It's going to be Diva, be <laughs> I'm just going to say the whole thing with punctuation. Diva behavior, colon, celebrity and the myth of the demanding woman. Nice. And nice. the reason why I say the de a demanding woman is a myth is because you just never hear about a man being called demanding in the oh, public yeah. ever. And the best way to explain like my unifying theory of divadom is to look at the royal family. Mm -hmm. So who's got the most servants in the royal family? Who has the most stuff done for them? The queen. No one has ever called the queen a diva because mm -hmm. she was born to it. So subconsciously, we all feel, even if we disagree with this idea of birthright, there is a part of us that is like, well, yeah, that's her due because that's how she was born and there's nothing we can do about it. Then a level down from that is Princess Anne. No one calls her a diva either. Then a level down from that is Kate Middleton. She was born upper middle class. So mm -hmm. she'll get called a diva a little bit. Once in a while, there will be a little bit of controversy about her like going above her station. Not so much anymore. She's sort of like the darling of the world now. And then the final rung is Meghan Markle who not only was born like middle to lower middle class. She's a person of color. She worked her way up. That makes people really suspect of her. They're like, she doesn't deserve any of this. That's okay. why people are so angry about her now holding a higher station. It's not because of her behavior at all. It's because yeah. of who she, who they think she should be in the firmament of like class structure and race structure. I think there's a uh, partially, uh, well, racism, of course, but also sexism in a sense that there's that idea of she bagged a rich man, uh, you know, and like she, but she was a career woman that was ca very capable by herself and people don't give her any credit for that. But also mm -hmm. I think there's an element of jealousy. So when it comes to people who are just like regular people like me and you who suddenly, either find fame or fortune or marry a prince. 
<laughs> it really annoys everyone. Because if mm. you were born into that class, you can't really compete with that. You think, well, I wasn't born into that class. I wouldn't have had a chance. But mm. when somebody like you, you kind of go, well, why her and not me? And there's this element of jealousy in there, don't you think? Yeah. And it's like, we all have tall poppy syndrome. Like we all have a level of that where we're like, Hey, she wasn't supposed to go above me. She was supposed to stay with us. You know, (laughs) And I think a big part of the anxiety that we have about this is, is anxiety about women working, you know, like Mm. the, the word diva to mean a demanding woman, it started after women became stars in the opera. And that's because this was the first time really in history that a woman could work her way to the top. And that freaked people out. Like they were like, wait, 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 wait. Why are these low born women suddenly being like showered with praise, making tons of money. And we still have that anxiety to this day like Paris Hilton no one calls Paris Hilton a diva yeah. even though that's like her whole brand is I'm rich and I get whatever I want and it's because she was born that way you so expect it from her like it's okay you know exactly yeah exactly. it's true um okay I want to just uh, quickly talk about your stand-up comedy I know you didn't get to do it but what oh, is it yeah. about so what is the stand-up how did that happen so I guess it started because, which is funny because I, Joe Gunn, do you know who Joe Gunn is? He makes memes about the Real Housewives. He's amazing. No, no, He pointed this out to me because he asked me the same question on his podcast. And I was like, I started doing stand-up because I wanted to get into show business, but I hated um, other people's writing so much. And I was like, I don't want to perform crappy writing. I want to write it and direct it and produce it myself. And he was like, that is a diva thing to want. And I was like, that's so true. And I never thought of it that way. But yeah, I think it was partially that because I just wanted to be like an all in one, one stop shop for my own creative projects. Sure. Um, also, because I just didn't think I would ever be successful as an actor. And obviously, most of all, just because I love making people laugh. But you know, I always wanted to make people laugh. Even before I did stand up, I focused a lot on like humor writing. I had my own like little blog where I tried to make people laugh. But the idea to do stand up came from just, you know, one day realizing like, oh, and wait, this- I can do it. I can perform on my own. And what is the set? Like what themes are the set? What What is it about? Is it um, celebrity stories or is it like women's? St- what is it? It's mostly like social commentary. Um, I mean, now I haven't done it in it over a year. Well, I did have one sp- one spot in December, which was great. It was really fun. But yeah, it's mostly like social commentary. It's not so much like, it, it's not so much about my personal life. It's not so much any like real yeah. raunchy sex stuff. Cause I like tried that in the beginning, but I just didn't really it was- like how it, I don't know. I, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of like, like jokes about like, parents putting pictures of their kids on Instagram and like things like that. Cool. Have you performed it in uh, London and America or just in London, the stand up? Yeah. So I performed in New York. Um, I started, I started in New Jersey. Then I moved to New York. I was in New York for like five years doing it off and on. Cause I was always working full time while I was doing it. Um, and now, yeah, in London, it's been for like two years. And do you yeah. think the audiences are different about what they like, mm. how yes. uh, welcoming they'll be, how open they are to listen to you? Yeah. Uh, weirdly, I found very unexpectedly that London audiences are a little more sensitive than oh, wow. like Manhattan audiences. Wow. Like, really? That's interesting. It's, which I really didn't expect. Mm. Once you leave London, that goes out the window. They don't give a shit. They'll laugh at anything. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're outside London, which is nothing great. nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, but yeah, and also I think uh, people are more people will laugh out of politeness a little bit more in London. So Mm. sometimes it's harder to tell if you're at an open mic trying out new material. It's a little harder to tell if the joke is working because you get the nice chuckles no matter what, and people are so nice and supportive. Whereas in New York, people are like, it's like a game of chicken. Like who's gonna break first? We're not gonna laugh unless you say something that absolutely like destroys us. You know what I mean? Wow, I'd be so scared. Like that's so intimidating. You don't be scared. No, but I would. I would never do like open mic, and Mm. definitely not in New York. I would. I would be so scared. And actually, I did a tour last year with my book, and I. I did a one woman show and I didn't call it stand up because I was too scared to put that pressure on me. So I said it was 
it's stories and if you laugh that's a bonus um but it was meant to be funny yeah it was <laughs> so luckily story. people laughed and i actually found that the american audience was a bit more uh, held back. Oh, only in the sense that they don't drink as much. Like in the UK, uh -huh. you go Manchester, everybody was like grilling. The show hadn't started and they were already falling over the, you know, off their seats. And like <laughs> London were really loud. And actually I think New York was the toughest crowd. Like that audience, yeah. I, I was But that like, was in oh. the theater, that was off Broadway. Yeah, that it was, was, like a, it was a very funny venue as well. You know, yeah. it was like the whole yeah. thing was a bit weird. Uh, but my favorite, audience in america was so bizarre it was in houston like really yes and you have to understand that my entire show was about vibrators and masturbation <laughs> and i'm sitting in houston right thinking they're gonna hate me and there were so many men in the audience but they were fantastic they were so great that is great. That is yeah. unexpected. I guess if they knew that's what it was about, they were like dying <laughs> for it. Cause they're like, I live in Houston. I'm not allowed to talk about this. Like yeah. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> no, they were so warm and friendly. And after the show, they all came out and, and like, you know, were they, they were such a, a welcoming crowd. It was so good. So where, so where can people find if they want to see your writing, maybe some of your stand up? podcast yes what's the where's the best place for people to go to check you out we're basically losing the light molly so we gotta wrap it up <laughs> <laughs> i just noticed i just noticed my camera's really darker and darker. <laughs> that's so funny uh, <laughs> instagram is the best place cool. and i i'm on instagram and twitter at molly Molshine. and if you want to listen to my podcast it's called space trash and I would love to have you guys on in the future. Yeah. We'll do we'll do a little astro reading of your relationship. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. If you're into that. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Amazing. Really yeah. That would be yeah. so good. We'll give it six months. <laughs> uh, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. And when you're back in London, uh, let me know when you're doing some stand-up and I'll come and yeah. have a look. You do know that Mike's a, an agent. Like, he represents comedians, right? Oh, no, my, I did not my, know that. my day job. That's what he does. It's my actual day job. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I didn't know that because there I probably are. would have just been like drooling and being yeah. nervous. There you are. So oh, I'll, I'll come along. I'll come along. Yeah. Cool. Something. That's yeah. so cool. It was so lovely chatting Absolutely. to you and no and and meeting you. And thank you for coming on our show. It was so great speaking with you guys. Thank you guys so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. And for everybody listening, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review, and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>